<clears throat> All right, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And while you're turning there, I just want you guys to, uh, to, to think about your Bible as you're flipping through it. And, uh, and what is this to you? You know, is this the Word of God to you? Is this, uh, is this a guide for life? Is this a guide for leading our families, for leading churches? Is this uh, the wisdom of the creator of the world? And I just want to ask you this. Are you thankful for it? Uh, tonight, my message is going to be on being thankful. Thankfulness. And uh, from the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, it says that, <clears throat> chapter 5, verse 15, it says, See then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And then a little further down in verse 20, it says, Giving thanks always. <clears throat> For all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, God wants us to give thanks. He's commanding us out of his word that he gives us to give thanks. And uh, we shouldn't take that lightly. We should, <laughs> we should obey him in every single thing we should give thanks and uh, it's definitely the will of God, he tells us. And uh, the next thing I want to look at is uh, some bad examples in Scripture of some people that didn't give thanks. And first off, uh, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 1, verse 21. And we all know what Romans chapter 1 is. And, uh, and the, it, there's some steps to getting like that, to becoming reprobate. In Romans chapter 1, 21, it says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Almost said they, came, they became lame instead of vain. But, uh, but <laughs> so the first step is they knew God. Everybody knows that there's a God. We have creation here that proves it. And, uh, and, but they glorified him not as God. And that's how they became reprobate. And the next step is, neither were they thankful. They weren't thankful for God and the things that he's done in their, in, for them and in the world. And uh, the example that I want to give is Nabal. In 1 Samuel 20, uh, 25, 15, uh, he had a bunch of sheep, and they were, uh, he had a bunch of people tending to the sheep, and David was out there with his uh, strong men, and they were helping protect his workers of the sheep. And they were protecting his sheep and everything. And uh, they all gave a report back to, to Nabal that he had done this. And uh, David kind of, uh, you know, wanted a little something, wanted some thankfulness and maybe a little gift. And uh, Nabal wasn't thankful. And he didn't give a gift. And if it wasn't for his wife, David would have come down and killed him because of his unthankfulness. And uh, later on, he actually does die. But uh, in 1 Samuel 25, 17, it says, Now therefore, knowing... Know and consider that thou, uh, what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master, and that's Nabal, and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak, speak to him. And now that's, that's a characteristic of, uh, of people that aren't thankful. They're just stubborn. Nobody can speak to them. They're being wicked. And obviously this guy, you know, lines right up with uh, Romans chapter 1 there. Amen, that's true. Uh, and unthankfulness leads to other sins. If you're, if you're being unthankful, <laughs> it leads to all these other wicked sins. When you're being thankful, how could you be, if, if you're being thankful for something and, uh, and you're acknowledging that somebody else has done something for you, God has done things for us, other people have done things for you, and you're being thankful, how could you be prideful about that? Amen. Prideful people think that they've done everything. And, uh, and with covetousness, if, if you're coveting other people's stuff, then you're not being thankful for the stuff that God's given you, the things that you have in your life. Amen. And uh, another plague on America and a lot of the countries now is depression. And people that are getting depressed, if they'd obey God's word and be thankful, then they wouldn't be depressed. They'd be, uh, they'd be thankful. And um, one of the best examples uh, that I know of in the Bible about being thankful is Job. I spent a lot of time in Job last year in... Uh, in Job uh, 2, 9, it says, <clears throat> Then said his wife unto him, 
uh, dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. That's a rough wife there. That's, it's a tough situation when your wife's saying that. Now, he went through a lot of bad stuff, but um, and, and he lost all of his, uh, his animals and his children. And, and now his wife is saying this, but this is why she, she's saying that he's uh, retaining his integrity. And, um, and he's about to correct her. You're about to see, you know, this is a great example of how to correct somebody in your family. And um, <clears throat> he says to her, and uh, in Job 2.10, it says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as the foolish woman speakest. Now, he didn't just call her a name. He, he compared her actions to what somebody that he doesn't want her to be. He compares her actions to that of somebody that he doesn't want her to be. He doesn't just call her the name and label her that. He's going to correct her actions. And then he uses a question, a rhetorical question. He knows the answers to one that she can't argue against. And he says, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? And all this did Job, <coughs> did Job sin, uh, did not Job sin with his lips. So he asks her, are you just going to receive good but not evil? So she's only thinking of the evil because that's what she's living right now. But what he's asking her to do is think about all the good stuff God's done for you. Amen. He's, talk, he's saying, change your mind with the thankfulness. Right. It's kind of like God prescribes this commandment to us to be thankful. Yeah. And it's like, uh, it's like medicine for people's minds. If they would just be thankful, it would, uh, it would heal a lot of stuff in their minds. It would change a lot of things. It would keep them out of a lot of different sins. And... We teach, our, uh, we teach our children all the time to be thankful, to, to be thankful to each other. They have to say thank you when they give, and, uh, and they're always thanking us. You know, it's, it's amazing when you do teach children because they get in the habit of it, and it really changes the way they feel towards each other and towards you, and, uh, and they're more loving and more kind, and, uh, and they just, uh, it just changes their whole demeanor when they're thankful because they're acknowledging that other people are doing things for them, and they can... Uh, and they're just reciprocating that, and they, they help each other out. And <clears throat> so this is, this is what I want my message to be about tonight, is just being thankful. And in this church, we're super blessed. We're so thankful for this church. We have a great church. Anybody that's in here, we have a great church. Amen. We have a bunch of great friends. We're blessed with all kinds of things. But there may be some people listening that may really be uh, down in the dumps and not, and not have as many blessings as us. But if you think about it, if, if they're alive and drawing breath, if they can, get, can read the word of God, if they can hear the gospel, and they believe on Jesus, if they can uh, think about the things that God has done for them. He's created them. He sent his son. He lived a perfect life. He died on a cross. And if they just believe on him, God's done all the work. They don't have to be, they can't be prideful and say they're good enough to go to heaven, but they can just trust on Jesus that's the main thing that we all have in common to be thankful.